Okay, good morning folks. Um, for today's entertainment, um, I'm putting up another game review. Uh, this is a game that was played uh, very recently, a couple of days ago, by one of my students, Skywalker7. He's relatively new to go. Um, and he sent me a message saying, Hi Robin, I just played this game which had me on the edge of my seat. I lost a winning game again. And I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Uh, I feel I play, I play okay and then do something stupid and lose the game. Anyway, if you get a chance, I'd really appreciate a review. Well, here's the review, because that's my that's the deal I have with my students. If they send me a game, I'll do a video review for them. So let's go. Um, I've been through the game once, and I hope Ash won't mind if I entitle this review, and entit indeed entitle the video, uh, Slack Moves and the Direction of Play. Because those are the two things that I want to focus on in this review. When, as beginners, and, and at all levels of Go, um, I don't think we ever get quite past this, um, we play moves that we don't need to. Uh, we play unnecessary moves, and effectively we give our opponent uh, two moves in succession, because they tanuki. And, and when we, when we say tanuki, we mean they don't answer our move. They don't feel the need to answer our move. The Japanese word for that is tanuki. And how often in Go would we like to get two moves in, one after the other? Well, in my case, a lot of the time. And when we play slack moves that require no answer, that's effectively what we're doing. We're saying to our opponent, you just have two moves, mate. It will be fine. And it rarely is. So that's the introduction. This is slack moves in the direction of play. Um, let's get into the game. Okay. So, um, Skywalker7 is is uh, 24k on the OGS server, and he's black, and his opponent is Darth Delta, 21k, and there's a 6.5 point Komi. So, we'll walk it through. So, black plays uh, lower right corner, entirely normal, white upper left corner, uh, lower left on a 3-4. I'm not sure what Skywalker had in mind with the 3-4, but he's experimenting. And uh, as a new player to the game, I absolutely encourage um, all of my students to experiment with different positions, different openings, find out what's what's happening here, find out what's happening on the go board and try and figure out um, how these shifts in move from something like the 3-4 to the 4-3 actually flows out across onto the game, uh, onto the board and through the game. Um, White takes the top right hand corner also on a 3-4 which leaves a very big space here uh, between these two stones and a very big space, space here between these two stones. And so it's um, Skywalker's first move. I would expect to see from um, a beginner player something like this for the first move and then we see what we call the attach drawback Giuseppe. So white attaches, black harnes, white draws back, Black makes shape, white makes shape, black makes shape. That would be a normal exchange in the opening so that white gets a 15 point um, solid corner in the top right and black gets uh, some points and builds a position on the right hand side. That's what I would expect to see um, at this level of play. That's kind of a normal play. That's not what happened in the game. Um, with Black's first move, Black played here. So Black's dived right in between these two um, white stones. So it's a pretty bold statement. It said, I'm going to split your stones apart and, and I'm going to live here. I'm going to break up your side. Fair enough. So White does a high pincer from the right hand side. Uh, this is good for White because White is now um, building this area of the board. White's building that territory in the top right. So what does black do? Black makes a base, which is okay. Um, the only problem with um, this move is that black's making a base on the fourth line. When we count lines in go, we go one, two, three, four. So that's the fourth line up. Equally, if we were over on the other side of the board, we would call these one, two, three, four. We treat the go board like a pyramid, and so we always count up from the edges. Um, a two space extension like that, if it's on the third line, is great because it's solid. On the fourth line, it can be undermined and undercut, and I think we'll see that in the in the next few moves. So, uh, white pushes down from the top, 
and black blocks. White pushes again and black makes a shape. Not bad? Okay. Black saying, I'm interested in the left side, not the right side. That's the, that's the meaning of the move. White presses, that's a dangerous move for white because black can instantly Atari and black plays here. Now, this is the first of what I call the slack moves. If black had played, let's say here, Atari that stone, and then white plays here and black blocks there and white plays here, Black can play here. And if white runs away, black plays here. And notice that there isn't a cut here because black has got an extra liberty here. So if white does attempt to cut, black plays simply at h18. Okay, so what does white do then? Um, at that point, white may Atari on this side and black comes up and white may Atari that one and then black comes out. I don't want to do too many variations but at each point in go we can flow in a number of different directions like a river um, and I think that's much better for black because all of the white stones on this side of the board, you know, white is chopped into three groups and black is only in two. Anyway, let's go back to the game and see what happened. So black plays solidly. I think that's a slack move. White undermined um, black's uh, wall and that's because it was out on the fourth line as we commented earlier. If it was on the third line, this move uh, wouldn't work. So black comes out. I like this move, Ash. I think this is really great. It's actually saying, I don't want to get shut in by white. I'm going to come out towards the center. I've made my invasion. But notice what's happening here in the game. You have the third move out of the game. You had the opening play because after both sides have taken corners, after black's taken two corners and white's taken two corners, black has the opening move of the game. You threw a stone into the middle of, of white's potential area and it immediately came under attack. And so rather than building something solid, you're immediately uh, under attack and you're trying to rescue the group that you put in there. This is, not, uh, this is not great because you've simply made a liability for yourself. So you come out. So white hits that point there. And you Atari, which I think is great. That's, I would expect that one. Um, white runs away and then I would expect you to cut to connect on the inside and what I mean by connect on the inside is play here so that white stone on k18 now looks a bit silly and you're starting to build a solid shape on the top edge in the middle that says well if, if you think that was going to be your territory white it's not I'm going to have that territory I'm going to build a living shape in that and you've also got um, access out at the moment through that one and you've got access out through this one and you've got an Atari here. So, you know, black's in pretty good shape. What happened was after that one, white extended and then you connected, which means white didn't immediately, but actually white could then cut here. So I think this was another slack move. It missed the direction of play. What were you trying to do when you threw that first stone in on the J16, sorry, the K16 stone? You were trying to build a shape on the top side and now you're being forced out to the center. So having started with one plan, you've immediately had to shift, shift to another plan. White didn't actually play that one. Uh, White came out here and uh, created further vulnerabilities. So what did you now do? you came out again. I'm think I'm fine with that. I think that's that's okay given that you don't want to get sealed in. But please notice that your group is under attack. White is pretty solid on the right hand side and it's a bit thin on the left hand side, but you're under attack and you're solid. So white pushes here, you push out there. I think that was a slack move. That one needed to be there 
to maintain your connection. If you're pushing out, which is what you said when you played this stone, you said, I want to stay connected and get out into the center because I'm going to connect to that one. And I played that one, which meant that I gave up this one. Then stay with your plan. Stick with your plan. So white played there, and rather than connecting at M15, you came out, and black shut you in. Blacks, oh sorry, white isolated you. You then turned, which was the right move, because now white's in a bit of trouble here. And white makes terrible shape. This is the first of the bloopers, and actually I am going to put bloopers on the, this recording. There's the empty triangle. Remember the empty triangle? It's awful. Right, um, direction of play. Which way did you Atari this group, Ash? You Atari'd that way. So what did White do? White connected and gained liberties. White has now got one, two, three liberties. You've got a stone that's potentially about to be Atari'd there. You've got another cutting point right here that would actually threaten to attack these two stones. So, again, the game has flipped. You started out attacking and you end up defending. Meanwhile, if we just look at this sequence, and this is what I mean by direction of play, what about that Atari? So White's in Atari now and can do nothing but connect. And then Black comes up and White comes out and Black blocks. And guess what? We've got our old friend the ladder. And where's that ladder heading? It's heading off in that direction. And white's going to die. So there was a ladder there, a potential ladder. So that was, was a slack play that missed the direction. It missed the important direction. And I'm sure now you look at it, watching this review, you go, oh, it's obvious there was a ladder there. But it's never obvious in the game. We have to learn to see these shapes. Um, the other problem with the move that you played, which is this one, is it leaves cutting points. And if you want to put that white group under attack in the way that you do, play something like this. Don't leave cutting points, because now white has still got to come back and fix this. Otherwise, if black plays there, those three stones are going to die. So white's still got to do this, and then you Atari once here, and then you're going to kill all of those stones fairly straight in a fairly straightforward way. Let's go back to the game. You, you, you harned, white connected. We've been through that sequence. Great move, really good. You're attacking not by pushing close against your opponent, but you're attacking by stepping back. And um, my friend Jay, one of my other students, a, a Spanish guy, a Mexican guy actually, but who lives in Spain, uh, he describes this as an anaconda attack. He's, he, he likes the idea of the anaconda getting the rabbit, the white rabbit, and slowly bringing its coils to bear and squeezing around it and squeezing it to death. And that's what you're trying to do. These kind of moves where you're pushing hard to try and kill it, you're going to get into trouble because you're leaving behind you at all times these kind of cutting points. Um, the anac anaconda approach is much, much better. So I like that move a lot. Great direction of play, splitting white, putting pressure on the corner. Excellent. White comes out. You connect. White goes this direction. Um, what do you play? What about this one? If black plays here, then you get there. And so white's in an Atari here. If white saves this stone, we play here. And notice now that that group of two stones has got three liberties. This stone, that one there, has also got three liberties. But crucially, this white group here has got two. And it has no ability to get more. So what would happen here? Uh, one, two, if white does... So after that one, black does here, white does here, black does here, white cuts, black kills. 
We get there later in the game. I do understand that we get there, but I just want to kind of show you these are the kind of alternative sequences that you should be thinking. So, uh, white plays here and you push out that direction. Not bad, but it's kind of misdirected because now white seals this black group in. If the white group here is, manages to live, then you're in real trouble. I mean, it's almost a game over. Your invasion on your first move of the game, the first real move where you went into the top side, has just turned into a disaster. Um, and this shouldn't be happening so early in the game. In the event, mistakes are made by both sides, and so the game balances out. That's what it's like when you're 24, uh, 21Q. We expect to see mistakes. So you come there, so white comes out. You come out, attiring that stone. White saves the stone, and actually that wasn't the important stone. But And then, again, this is direction of play. What's the urgent attack here? If black manages to kill this white group, then everything's dead. So, and black has got access to the outside here. So I would, I think this this move, where you pushed in the corner, actually should have been here, to keep up the pressure on this group here, and maintain pressure on this. Works both. What does white do here? If white actually follows you in this way, then you go here, and white's almost got nowhere to go. Keep him moving. Not too many variations. You play there. White then seals black in. Now, if this white group lives on the outside, and here's white's mistake. White at this point needed to connect through this tiger mouth, here or here. And then white is alive. White pushes on the outside there, black connects, white pushes out there, liberty counting, two on the black stones on the right hand side, three in the middle, four in there, and black pushes in, atariing the white stones. White makes a forlorn attempt to push out and black kills. Fantastic result for black, really great result for black. You know, that, that doesn't negate all the stuff that I've just said about direction of play, but actually that only happened because your opponent made a really bad blunder. Uh, as you get stronger in Go, our expectations that our opponents are going to blunder uh, reduces. So that was a couple of slack stones. Let's keep going. So white connects on that side. Okay, the question now for both slack stones and the direction of play is, there's a pause in the fighting. White's taken a, a, a beating and is now trying to consolidate and hold on to what, what um, he's got. So where's the biggest move? And my question is, is that the biggest move on the board? How important is that stone that you spend your move um, attiring it? When you know exactly what, if white wants that stone, white will simply connect. And what does white do? Yeah, white connects. Two hugely slack moves. Slack move on part of black. You get the you get the main criticism, but you know, white. What what are you doing? I mean, at that point, white should be doing something like this: expanding territory, or um, maybe this, or something like this. Big, big, big territorial points. We're still in the opening. You've had the first encounter. Um, you've both got some uh, bruised and bloody and battered troops. Now start looking at the big picture again. And actually, just Skywalker 7 for you, if at this point, notice that you have Sente. And Sente means that you can play anywhere you like on the board. You don't have to answer. Now take a look at the board with that stone in place. Is that better than the stone you played? Um, many years ago, when I was a double-digit Q, I was at a tournament in Leicester, and I'd, I'd played a game, and I'd lost the game, and uh, a Dan player sat down with me afterwards to do a review. And although 
I was then playing on a physical board. Um, one of the things that that uh, Dan player said to me that's all stuck is he looked at my moves and he said, you know, there's no two centimetre rule in Go. And I said, what's that? He said, you don't have to play within two centimetres of your opponent's last stone. You can play any way you like, always. It's always a choice where you play and go. You don't have to play next to your opponent's last stone. And that stuck with me and it was a very helpful intervention. So uh, that's about the direction of play. That battle's over. The next battle's about to begin. Prepare your forces. You played that, white connected. Now what? You play again. This compounds the mistake. This is this is a further slack move. It really is a further slack move. Um, look at that move again now. Or look at that move. Or look at that move. Which of these would give you more um, punch in the game? I think the answer is obvious. So, one slack move, another slack move. For the first time, white gives you, actually gives you an opportunity to do some building here. You're going to look at that and you're going to go, what is that empty triangle? What is it doing there? What work does this stone think it's doing by making an empty triangle? None. Nothing. It's, an, it's a terrible shape. What about, let's look at this sequence black here. What does white do? If white harnesses, remember, or indeed if white cuts, remember, black cuts, white runs, black kills, because if white comes out, black kills, and the whole side is chopped to pieces. So what does white have to do with that move? What would white have to do if it if it were me? I'd have to concede and give up and then you come down and now you're building because now you start to build something in this area. Because can white do this? Well, yeah, it can, but then white's got to protect against this cutting point and then you cut this and you're still building. You're still still building. So this is about slack moves. Um, that's awful. There's a Go proverb that says there is death in the Hane. And that's what we mean when we do this kind of Hane. Okay, slack move. And what does White do? White takes the point that's been sitting there for at least three stones while Ash, you played that one and white played that one and then you played another stone which was that one and white played this one and then you played that one you played three stones in that area and actually all of that could have been achieved with a single stone or walked away and actually what could you have done what else could you have done with those three stones that's the question that's what I mean by slack moves and the direction of play okay we'll get back to the game I don't want to labor this too much because I don't want to make you feel bad it's a great game you, you're close by ten and a half anyway we'll keep going okay back to the game white comes in here which is the direction of attack I think the direction of attack is this side to actually build this territory on the left. Great, you came, you got it, you got it, you got it. A little bit high, I'd have liked that down on uh, here. I'd have liked that down on J3, because on J3, you're taking away the base. This, this stone here would love, love, love to play there, or indeed to play there, to make that two stone base on the third line. But So I think you're a little bit high there, but nonetheless, great direction. White comes in that direction, where should you play? I'm now looking at either R6 here, or maybe out Q7 to build a base for your stone in the corner 
and start to move up that territory. Remember, you've got this great, big, powerful, huge thing in the middle of the board that's actually radiating power in this direction, it's radiating power in this direction, and it's radiating power in this direction. And it's not so bad off in this direction. It's like a huge orbiting space monster that is right there in the center of the board radiating power you can choose any direction on this board because you've got that that big orbital uh, death star right in the middle of the right in the middle of the board okay it's not wrong but it's really a bit small it's 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 not quite on the money and i hope you can see that now uh, white comes in there i would expect you just simply to block at q3 again where's the territory here look at that as opposed to oops wrong look wrong location there now white's got to come this way because there's no points for white in the lower right corner it's got to make a base on there and actually if white comes here you come here white comes back you make shape you're getting territory in the lower left and you're getting territory on the right and you've still got the death star in orbit so let's um keep moving through the game you come out white makes the corner ah uh, what do we see here there it goes again that's the empty triangle i am going to get you to purge this from your go repertoire you will start slapping your own wrist whenever you make an empty triangle i promise you there it is there's the empty triangle white pushes out you block White turns, you block, white makes a tiger mouth, white's out now, white's got a living shape, white's got at least two eyes uh, in this area here, and so white's invasion is a success. You push out that way, white pushes out, where do you need to play now black, and you know, I'm looking at here, 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 this kind of space behind your wall, you've invested in a wall, even though it's got a very nasty, really nasty, because of the empty triangle, because of this, because of this bad shape here, this empty triangle, you've got a very, very unpleasant cutting point there that comes back to bite you later in the game. And again, if, the, if, there's, if you want one justification, one reason why the empty triangle is bad, is that it means th those three stones, three stones on a go board should have eight liberties. Three down each side and one at each head. Eight liberties for a three stone group if they're in a straight line. When you bend them like that, particularly against your opponent, these buddy, these guys have got three liberties. That's less than a, it's barely a third, barely 25% of what they should have. They're, 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 it's not good shape. Shut up now. Okay. Black comes out here. It's protecting the left side, but again if you want to protect the left side what's the matter with this kind of move okay you protect the left side and guess what white cuts you're really short on choices now because of that very bad shape of that empty triangle so you Atari this this way this is this is poor direction of play um, where are these guys vulnerable they're vulnerable in in this sort of direction. So which way do you need to push your opponent's stone? You need to push them this way and then white comes out that way and then you can come down and start to make some shape if white turns right here, white. And now you're alive. You've got two eyes. Pushing direction of play is, is the phrase for this pushing in this direction he's pushing them in the, in the direction that they're going to kill you so what does white do white comes down and out now keep liberty count how many one two liberty count how many one two three four liberty count one two three who's in trouble here it's clearly black and so that push in the wrong direction has um, 
sacrifice the stones for no benefit sometimes we sacrifice stones because we want to get a benefit else, elsewhere it's called an exchange we give something up on one side of the board to get something better or hopefully at least of equal value elsewhere with a more advantageous position here you've just given up the stones given up your cutting stones and given white a shed load of points next move black comes down here white kills the three stones slack move these guys are dead. They really are dead. There's nothing you can do about it. And so rather than hastening their death in some way, what's white going to do at that point? Well, clearly white's going to take them out. Does that become a sente? Uh, yeah, but 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 if instead of that one, why don't we look at this? Instead of that one, why don't we look at this? build something huge in the lower left corner. This is too slack and too small. White takes. You get Sente. Now, where are we where are we hoping that black will play? I'm hoping that black will play somewhere like here, somewhere like here, maybe here. Something in that kind of area. <laughs> I've got to ask, if we were sitting face to face in a go class, what's the bad thing that you thought that would stop happening? Let's look at it. Let's look at that for a moment. Um, it's black's move. You can play anywhere on the board. Let's for a moment, let's assume that you play here. And white cuts. And you play down. And white comes down. And you play down. And white turns. And then you play somewhere like there to protect. It looks to me like all of this has become black territory, pretty much. But there wasn't a bad thing. There was a one-point move. This was this this was a at best a one-point move. So when you played it, he gave white sente to play anywhere white wanted on the board. And what did white do? It cut. These guys like fighting. Hopeless cut because, again, as you might imagine, here comes the ladder. There's the ladder. Doesn't work. So black, I'm assuming, read that ladder out. Yep. Well done. Let's go back. Yep, excellent. And white cuts there. And black takes. Perfect. You spotted the ladder. You got it. Well done, Ash. Sorry, Skywalker 7. And white runs out. So now black is super strong uh, in this area of the board. All strong and all connected. It's given up the corner and it's still got the Death Star here. So what's the move that we're looking for black to play now? something like here to actually turn all of this side into territory and actually just completely isolate and cut off these guys here can you see the difference that move or that move and how big that is in terms of points this is this is just slack and white comes out and you make a move and white makes a, a shape and now white's getting getting some fighting liberties because you've got some cutting points in your shape here and you play this one which again direction of play as we've just said these guys are super strong These guys are very weak. How are these weak stones going to get out of the hole that they're in? They're going to get out of that hole by running in this direction. Towards the corner where they've got friendly stones. They've got these stones here. Uh, they've got this stone here. 
there's even this stone here because this stone can jump up and kill, cut and kill this the uh, the black stone on the edge there. So they're going to run in that direction. So if they're going to run in that direction, um, which direction do you need to block them? This move. Shut off their escape route. Make them either live locally here, in which case you're going to get some advantage into the corner, or kill them. Okay, so you play here, which means you're pushing along the edge. So white, I would expect, is going to jump towards its buddies. No, white mm -hmm. makes an awful move. Another empty triangle. Big blooper for that one. Bang. Terrible move. Okay, he's given you another opportunity to now play this kind of move and just kill the whole of that white group. So what does black play? Black plays there. Okay, I've got to ask the question. I would ask the question of the view if we were sitting face to face. Why did you play there? What bad thing was going to happen? Let's look at it. If white, if 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 say black plays over here, white plays here, black plays here, white plays here, black plays here, white plays here, or probably here black comes down white comes down black turns white's about to die so black white fixes black takes can white push this way no there's nothing for white here white's dead okay let's look at another sequence if you really want to play here because your move was there sorry your move was in the game was here let's look at this one instead how does this help can white push down now no because of that can white push in there no because of that and white connects and then black fixes the cutting point white's dying again so here back to the game you play this one white comes out here now white's starting to run uh, towards his buddies out here and you make some territory on the edge I can't knock it it's 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 making some territory on the edge and white pushes and you block and white is asking to die here and white plays this way now you should just kill now you really 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 should just kill here And white has got nothing to do. What happens if white plays here? Black, white cuts. Probably Atari wants this direction and then come down here. I mean, white is dead. White is dead. What can white do here? Nothing. All of the white stones are dead. So white plays this move and black should ignore it and get on with the game, get on with the killing, but you answer. Slack move. Really bad. And white plays. Slack move. These these are one point end game moves. You're still in the mid game fighting. We're not in the end game. We're in the mid fighting. And so then having already played one move to ensure this connection, you then play a second move in this direction to ensure this connection. I I need you to just look at that board for a moment and go, what can white do here? Can white play here? Well, black just plays here, and white goes down, and black plays here, and, and white's dead. Okay, if that doesn't work, can white play... Um, I don't know. There is, no, there is no answer. So, you've just played two stones to maintain the same connection. It's a really slack move. Didn't need to be played. That, there's nothing white can do. That one or that one is the killing blow that kills all of these white stones. They're owls in a sack. The anaconda, the black on an anaconda is tightening its coils. It's about to go. Okay. B played there. So white comes out. So now white really is moving out. And you push in. 
and white blocks and then you push out and white hanes and again I would have expected the last throw of the dice before white gets out is to play here this is direction of play is white going to answer yes can you then make a connection yes why can you make a connection because if white plays here you play here if white plays here you play here double Atari notice both of these stones are in Atari if white selects this one you take that one white's dead white's dead go back so the direction of this fight now has moved. The important area for black to seal white in is in this area. It is not as we play white does this, play out here. Because white is simply going to connect at somewhere like P13. White doesn't. White pushes. Black pushes. White now plays P13 and has got a bamboo joint here to hold its troops together and is, is looking to get out. Black backs off. White comes out. White's now out and connected. Black pushes in. White connects. Black plays. White plays. This is a nonsensical. This is a nonsensical move, this one. Um, what when black plays here, black knows exactly, exactly and precisely that white will answer here. So don't play it. Save it for later. Leave it as a co-threat. It's a great move for later. Don't play it now. Because you've now, at this point, you've got Sente. You can play any way you like on the board. Yes, of course, I know that um, white answered and you've still got Sente and you protect a cutting point that didn't need protecting another slack move let's just go back and say if, if instead of that one you played here big territorial move let's look at it white plays there what does black do black plays there now what does white do white plays there black plays there now what does white do there's nothing to protect against nothing at all so when you played uh, the move you did it was a meaningless move. I'm, I'm sorry to say it in that way, but that's what it was. Meaningless. Slack is the word of the day. So white then makes a big move. White makes a big spatial territorial move that starts to take control of the game. Too small. The Death Star is still in place. Wrong direction of play attack that stone directly now that stone is floating inside black's area what if what if white does this then you cut can black cut white cut no comes out and then there's our old friend the ladder there's our old friend the ladder here it comes and so on and so forth attack this movie is saying Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt the center rather than attacking white. And white harnays immediately. So the stone that you've just played is now under attack. Uh, the double harney doesn't work because uh, white's got cutting points. White runs away. You follow. And white makes a shape move that is now attacking the black lower left corner. So white's now got this little wall here and he's moving in on this fella. Wrong direction of play. What's white going to do? White's going to descend. Uh, actually, white chooses to pick off the top. So you get that push, and then white push, and then black push. And then white attacks the corner. And this is where the game's going horribly wrong for you, Ash, because you're being left up, uh, left with the territory in the center. And white looks like it's going to get all four corners. Defensive move. What were you defending against? Where's the direction of play? What's the important place to play now? It's somewhere like here. If white cuts and then 
white cuts and then white's got to protect this and that can push there are lots of variants I don't want to get hung up on the variants because we've got to move through to the conclusion of this game black here down turn white blocks black blocks white blocks can you now see the double Atari that's screaming at you play me here double Atari and you shatter completely white's position no this is a, a super slack move what you're trying to do here is protect against um, white cutting at that point there and actually if you want to protect that um, then sorry white plays this one and play this and then white hannes and then you make this kind of shape and it's much more open shape and it leaves cutting points but the most urgent move for black after white's move is that double atari what's white going to say white saves here black comes here and now white has got to fix this cutting point white has got to fix this cutting point this move because if white does something like this then just black will just kill everything Atari push everything's dead so missing that um, that double Atari was that slack move and white plays that one and you ignore it good job but the cutting the, the, and now the double Atari is gone no it's not it's still there but you can only but white can save one white blocks another slack move where's the important play here for black it's connecting it's making sure those stones don't get cut off the Hane means that white Hane's that means that you connect and now we're liberty counting um, terrible move by white really awful because actually that move by white kills black because Black has got one, two, three liberties, and White's got four, and four, and a connected eye. It's all bad. White plays here. I, I can't knock it because you're trying heroic, brave moves, but actually the super urgent move right now is that one, which I'm sure you can now see. It's blindingly obvious. It's the thing about reviews is we get to see what we, we really think and feel. Um, you play here a bit of a forlorn move I don't know whether anything comes of this white quite correctly cuts you you cut white white makes a shape move to make sure that he doesn't get cut off oh this is the point at which you could have killed that corner I remember you play there now what do you play <laughs> I'm afraid you just played another slack move. If you play here, what happens if white plays here? Then you just connect. Okay. So at this point when white pushed out, you came back and connected because you thought you could cut here. So white fixes that cut and you push in there and white makes shape in the corner and you kill well done but here you could have killed and kept all of your stones and hence the attack on the corner because what happens is you kill on this side and you give up the three stones alternatively at this point you simply connect and you keep the three stones and you, you, kill the, you kill the white group on N16 as well. You get both. It's a both and rather than an either or. Um, so here you, in the game you kill. White comes. Do you need to take that back? Is that the most important move on the board? Or is it that more important locally to get some more points? I'm afraid that's the answer. Now white gets to move. White connects, you connect, 
you know these are again super slack moves what why did you connect here why didn't you just kill these stones here sorry if I'm sounding a bit critical Skywalker 7 I'm just getting passionate about the game now and white gets away and now you connect here and then white cuts white's cut is hopeless because what's white gonna do what's this white stone stone gonna do I mean it's not gonna do anything it's way inside blacks territory hopeless move by white crazy stuff White cuts you block White protects that double that double Atari, which was the vital point in the whole game. Vital point in the whole game. And then you come down on the side. So by coming down on the on the outside, it's pretty much over. You're giving um, White that entire lower left corner. White's got the upper right, uh, the lower right. Now got the lower left. White Hane's you Hane. White connects. Another slack move coming. Why do you do that? Why do you connect? What bad thing can happen? Can white play there? Well, we know white cannot play there because we've got a tiger mouth here. Okay, so white cannot play there. Just imagine for a moment that you played something um, like this to jump into the territory and disrupt um, white's territory on that side. So white plays here. So you play here and white comes down and black comes down and then white might be able to jump. Oops, get rid of that. Jump. Okay, so you've lost some points there, but then you play something like this and erase all of the points inside white's area and actually threaten threaten to kill those stones. So you've given up a little bit here on this edge but gain massively on this edge and that would have flipped the 10 points that, that this game cost you. Okay, we're running through to the end now. So this again gets a honking horn because it's another slack move. This one. You made the block, white locks. You don't need to play that move. So white turns, huge move, huge 15 point move. All of these points in the corner have just become whites. Again, that will be the point at which white wins the game. You make shape. You kind of back off and go, don't hurt me, please. What is the matter with this one? White does this. Now you do this. Can white do this? Two, three, four, five, six. I don't think so. I don't think there's an answer for white there. And so these kind of moves in the end game are just giving your opponent points. So white protects the cutting points in his shape. Too slow. You can, as black, this is entirely doable. White, black. What does white do now? Black, black, white and then white cutting point. You've just eaten up some points of white. You've just reduced white's territory. Um, this kind of move um, is just too slow. White blocks. You block, white connects. That makes you some points. That's a, that's a, that's a move, but I think the game is now slipping away from you. Push in, white pushes in, you seal, white confirms the points in the lower left you play that opens up a cutting point at p18 so that's a sente i would expect white to respond and white does that's securing territory white's making that corner even bigger horrible empty triangle do you need to even answer there are there any bigger points on this board i'm not sure maybe the right maybe maybe that was the right move White makes another uh, space move. His uh, shape move is obviously a bit paranoid. Good move, good end game. White plays, black connects. It's a black center because white now has to fix. Push. Uh, this is a neutral point. Um, this one here, it's not bounded by the player. If you want to reduce white, because white doesn't have to answer that one. 
then um, what does white do? White protects that push block push and now white has to come back and do that because if not you get another sente in that area okay so you push there white connected anyway you hane white block block hane block connect let's just look again what's the bad thing that's going to happen that's another slack move can white play there um, say that black plays this one and makes white do this um, and I don't know black plays this one can white play here clearly not can white play here clearly not white dead uh, can white play here clearly not white dead. There's nothing that's going to happen there. I'm afraid that's another, let's just go back to where we were in the game, after you played that one, white connected and then you played a, a solid move. You connected something it didn't need connecting which gave white another move and white takes a point off it. About two points takes a prisoner and a point. You come down, white blocks, you block, white makes shape. Uh, does that cutting point need protecting? Is there a bad thing that's going to happen there? I can't see it. That's another slack move. Not only is it a slack move, by playing inside your own territory, you've just deducted a point from your own score. You didn't need to play the stone there at age 10. You've deducted a point from your own score. This game was only lost by 10 points. These things are important. That's minus one to black. White comes down. You block. White draws back. You make shape. White pushes, you block. White makes shape, you block. White protects, you block. White forces, and you connect. Game's almost over. White says belt and braces. I don't want that white court, that black stone in the corner, do anything bad. You block. White blocks. Um, nonsensical move. White just takes you straight off the board. Uh, I think that's the end of the game. Yeah, pass, pass, pass. And I think the outcome was white by ten and a half, which wasn't terrible, but there were so, so, so many uh, missed opportunities by black in that game. And they really came down to the two things that we started out with. One is not playing slack moves. And we define slack moves as moves that you simply don't need to play, but crucially, give your opponent two moves in succession. And uh, why would we want to do that? And the second one is direction of play. Uh, looking at the overall shape and, and direction of play was particularly important uh, in this fight here uh, on the right side when this group was under attack and, and uh, Skywalker said you, you constantly miss the direction of play. You miss the fact that actually this was this kind of error is the vital point. Getting way past and beyond the white group and killing them in a large scale rather than trying to nitpick around the edges of, of their shape. Okay, I think that will do for now. Uh, I hope that's useful. Sorry if I've been a bit brutal, Skywalker7. Uh, I'm, I'm just using this as an example for other players as well as you on those two key bits of the Go game, which are direction of play and introduction to and not making slack moves. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you again, folks. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, give me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this from the Brit Go player, um, please subscribe. OK, see you soon, folks. Bye for now.